few things in life can rival the intoxicating beauty of an evergreen forest. The trees emanate a sense of boundless tranquility and are a testament to the manifold perfection of nature. The forest embodies an ideal of both functionality and beauty. It provides food for insects and shelter for animals, while softening harsh mountainsides with their vibrant green needles. But perhaps their most distinctive characteristic is the refreshing, fragrant odor of the needles themselves. The source of this unmistakable aroma is tiny molecules called terpenes that seep out of the evergreen needles. Their primary function is as a natural insect repellent for the trees, but new research has shown that these terpenes may also play a vital role in the creation of rain clouds above the forest. This discovery may completely change our conception of the forest's role in the water cycle and would be an important step towards understanding the complicated interdependence of our mountain ecosystems. A large study is currently underway in Colorado to explore these findings and to determine the significance these molecules may play in the regional water cycle. Welcome to the Manitou Experimental Forest outside of Manitou Springs, Colorado. The forest has been maintained by the U.S. Forest Service since 1936 as a research site for studies on ponderosa pine trees. Most recently, it's been chosen as a site for a large study involving an international team of biologists, chemists, and atmospheric physicists. The focus of the study is the tiny molecules called terpenes that originate in the pine needles. One thing that these forests do is they emit organic molecules to the atmosphere. Most of you are familiar with these molecules. If you've strolled through a pine forest, you'll smell that, that pine scent that we oftentimes associate with the holidays. That pine scent is due to organic molecules with fairly complex scientific names, alpha-pinene, beta-pinene, camphene. We generally call them terpenes. And these terpenes, when they're emitted to the atmosphere, we think, and this is our hypothesis, have a very important role in nucleating clouds and triggering clouds and seeding cloud formation. The process of cloud seeding begins down in the forest where the terpene molecules are generated by pine trees. The trees store millions of these terpenes in their needles, primarily as a form of self-defense. The terpenes can poison insects when consumed, shutting down their metabolism and even causing death in high dosages. Due to their high concentration in the needles, many of these terpenes leak out naturally and are carried up into the atmosphere by rising air. In this new environment, the floating terpenes encounter electrically unstable molecules called free radicals, which latch on, forming a chemical bond. An oxygen molecule also fuses onto the new compound, creating a polarized particle. This new particle begins combining with other similar particles, forming a cluster called an aerosol. As these aerosols continue to drift through the atmosphere, they collect water molecules, eventually growing into clouds. Collaborating on the research is a team of scientists from several universities and institutions around the world. Their camp consists of a village of field laboratories housed in trailers and situated around a large metal tower rigged with instruments. When all is said and done, the terpene studies will involve nearly 100 researchers, a necessity dictated by the complexity of the problem. So why does it need to be this big? And the reason is because the processes are quite complex and, and it's too much for any individual technique or for any individual research group. For example, you can think of, of one of these particles I mentioned. It has 100 billion molecules and many of those molecules are different from each other. And it's difficult to have any one instrument that can tell you what all of them are. So often you end up bringing, you know, 10 different instruments, each of which is good at, at one aspect of the problem. So, and then you, it's like a puzzle. You put the puzzle together and then you look at all the pieces and then that way you can try to understand better what's going on. The process of cloud seeding begins with the emission of the terpenes from the needles to the atmosphere. So a number of experiments have been set up to measure these emissions and to determine whether different variables, such as the amount of light or water a tree receives, will affect those emissions. 
One of the questions we want to address is, what is the role of rainfall on the production of these organic molecules? We've actually set up an experiment where we're manipulating the amount of water that trees have access to. So we've set up a variety of plots around single trees. And for some trees, we're depriving those trees of the natural rainfall they would normally get. And then we're moving that water to other trees. So they're receiving more than the normal rainfall. And then we're measuring the rate at which these organic molecules leak from the needles in these different drought treatments. And this will allow us then to put this information into a computer model and make predictions about the role of this forest in the water cycle in dry years, for example, versus wet years or make predictions about how the forest might interact with the water cycle as the climate changes. While some groups are focused primarily on the emission phase of the process, other groups are examining the fate of the terpenes as they make their way up into the atmosphere and grow into clouds. Groups uh, like myself, like my group, or the group of Jim Smith at NCAR, study how these um, compounds react and how do they make particles. And then there are yet other groups which study how these particles which have already been formed and which are present here uh, may affect the clouds. Both the clouds lower down, with the, what we call the water clouds, and the clouds very high up, the cirrus clouds, which are those wispy clouds that you see high in the atmosphere. In addition to the field work, it's necessary for researchers to be able to analyze the process in a more controlled, stable environment. Supplemental experiments on the terpenes are conducted in a large laboratory in Boulder, Colorado at NCAR, the National Center for Atmospheric Research. Our understanding of what's going on in Manitou Forest really starts here in the laboratory uh, because we can simplify things. Out in the forest, everything is complicated, everything is changing, a lot of things going on. Uh, we can make it real simple here in the laboratory so we can control the environment like light and temperature but we can also control the mixture of gases. So we can take, for example, just one single gas and uh, see how that affects oxidants and particles in the atmosphere. So it's this combination of, of, of very highly controlled laboratory analyses and then a number of, of observations and analyses that we can do at the site in real time, if you will. Uh, we put those together to try to rebuild the chemical reactions that are occurring in the atmosphere and, and rebuild how those chemical reactions are leading to the formation of these particles. The development and implementation of extremely specialized equipment is vital to this type of research. Much of this equipment is developed by the researchers themselves in institutions like NCAR. One of the most important pieces of equipment being used in this study is a proton transfer reaction mass spectrometer or a PTRMS. This system allows us to uh, uh, measure most of the important biogenic volatile organic compounds. And it does it very quickly and uh, can detect very low levels of these biogenic VOC. The PTRMS is a fundamental asset in this study because it provides a window into the molecular universe of the terpenes. By observing how these tiny molecules function at a molecular level, the researchers can begin to understand how they affect things at a larger scale. The importance of this work lies in being able to link this process back to the water cycle. By understanding how aerosols from the forest relate to the creation of rain clouds and precipitation, Scientists can predict how changes in the forest might impact regional rainfall. This is one small component of what we might call the hydrologic cycle, the water cycle on the Earth. And it, it brings forests into a very important role in that water cycle. So rather than think about the water cycle in terms solely of rain and moving moisture around in the atmosphere, the forest could actually be triggering the formation of some of the clouds that produce that rain. This is important for climate, this is important for predicting the future health of the forests and, and forest fires and things like that. And it's through the synthesis of, of these larger scale findings that you then kind of feed back to the policymakers, the politicians, and you tell them, well, you need to uh, modify what you're doing in this way or, or that kind of thing. In the past, we could use really crude assumptions and, and have a lot of leeway 
Um, now as, as things are getting, uh, as our water resources are getting tighter, uh, essentially, we, we need to uh, put in some of this complexity, like understanding how aerosols affect precipitation. Um, and uh, the idea that uh, as, as we change aerosols, we're gonna change the amount of rain and, and therefore the amount of water we have available in different regions. The word Manitou comes from the Algonquian Native Americans. It represents the idea of an interconnection between everything in nature and life. The idea, for instance, that a molecule from a pine tree might play a role in creating the water we drink. It serves to remind us that we are all part of a delicately balanced system, a framework that supported mankind throughout the ages, the complexity of which we are only now beginning to understand.